Hello, my name is Rachel Gilder and I'm here today to highlight the importance of effective waste management within the pipeline industry. But before we begin, I'd like to give you a little background information on myself and why I chose to bring this subject to your attention. So I started working for a specialised construction company in the gas sector in December 2015 as a quality administrator. And during the last four and a half years, I have gained a vast amount of knowledge and experience within this industry. I'm currently training to become a quality advisor, which involves regularly visiting our construction sites to carry out compliance audits, review site documentation and compile handover records, which includes checks on waste operations and other areas. I'm also required to provide support to our project teams and offer advice on various topics as and when it is necessary. So why have I chosen waste management? Well, unfortunately, climate change is a huge global issue. The environment and the impact we have on it is constantly hitting the headlines. Therefore, it is really important to me, my company and our clients that we get waste management right. Furthermore, it is our duty of care to ensure that effective waste management processes are put in place. And this is one of the main reasons I based my synopsis in this area. So these are just some of the types of waste the pipeline industry produce. Firstly, there is mixed construction, which can be generated from the breaking out of existing structures and can amount to tons of material which needs to be removed. During excavation, vast amounts of soil and stone is produced. And although some of this can be reused or replaced, the remainder needs to be disposed of compliantly. Metal waste in the form of redundant pipe work and fittings can also be created and must therefore be processed correctly. And finally, there is hazardous waste generated from coating and painting products, as well as asbestos and glycol. However, as mentioned a few seconds ago, these are just some of the waste streams the pipeline industry generates, and they can all have a detrimental effect on our environment, including air and water pollution, which is why it is imperative they must be dealt with correctly and compliantly. So what happens if things go right or wrong? Well, there are many reasons for wanting to do a good job. Firstly, as much of the work we carry out can have potentially catastrophic effects, our operations are heavily audited by ourselves, our clients, and sometimes by regulatory bodies, such as the Environment Agency, SEPA, or Natural Resources Wales. Positive audits can increase overall environmental performance, which contribute to project-specific KPIs and can increase client satisfaction, which in turn can lead to an enhanced reputation and ranking within the industry. Furthermore, we can all be safe in the knowledge that we are doing everything possible to minimise any negative impacts on our environment. So what happens if things go wrong and why does it matter? Well, firstly, the Environment Agency can hand out substantial fines per infringement of waste regulations, ranging from hundreds to thousands of pounds. For some companies, this could threaten their survival, leading to loss of jobs. The Environment Agency also maintains a public register where offenders are named and shamed. This public register is accessible by everyone, such as our clients, colleagues and members of the public, which can lead to potential damage to reputation and ranking. After all, nobody wants to work or do business with companies who are proven to have a high disregard for the compliance regulations. Finally, and the most important reason for effective waste management is that without it, irreversible damage can be caused to our environment. So who is responsible? Well, one of the main challenges I've encountered in my role is to ascertain who is responsible for compliance in the correct storage, transfer and disposal of waste on our construction sites. The project manager, environmental manager, environmental advisor and store person are just some of the site personnel who have an interest in ensuring that waste is processed correctly. But as you can see from the diagram opposite, 
When things go wrong, the finger of blame can be pointed in all directions. However, ultimately it is everybody's responsibility to realise that success is a product of effective teamwork. So as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, I am currently training to become a quality advisor. And part of this role involves assisting the project manager with handover documentation at the end of the project. During my training, I have come across many challenges where waste compliance is concerned. One of these challenges was discovering that project teams did not always fully understand the importance of all the information to be recorded on waste documents. Therefore, the possibility for mistakes and omissions was high. Upon liaising with site personnel, I also concluded that sometimes they did not have access to the online broker portals which contain copies of waste licences and permits. However, upon investigation into these online portals, I soon discovered that documentation such as waste carrier licences and waste disposal permits had not always been checked for completeness and accuracy before being uploaded. So how did I overcome these issues? Well, firstly, I focused on training and raising awareness with site personnel to convey areas of responsibility and the importance of compliance. I also fed back on weak areas and gave positive encouragement for successes. I supplied our project managers with login details to the online portals to ensure they had access to the information that was available. And finally, I liaised with our procurement manager and together we set up meetings with our contacts at the waste brokers to discuss the issues our site teams were having. So although I had taken steps to improve how waste documentation was managed on site, I still felt that more needed to be done to highlight the importance of it. Therefore, utilising my own knowledge and that of my colleagues, I put together a training package which brings together all the contrasting elements of information and guidance using visual training and attendee participation. So what does this training package include? Well, firstly, I developed a guidance document, which is available in our internal IMS. The objective of this procedure is to ensure that all of FASFLOW's project sites meet the legal, statutory and operational regulations for effective waste management. It is also to provide guidance to our project and office personnel, subcontractors and third parties on fulfilling their compliance obligations. It describes the procedures to be followed and the responsibilities for implementation. Secondly, and to accompany the guidance document, I put together a short waste management slideshow, which is to be presented to all of our site teams to highlight the importance of effective waste management and the implications for not adhering to the regulations. Finally, I developed a best practice, which summarises the training package and advises on what tools are available on the subject of waste management. This is to be displayed at all of our project sites to highlight to our clients, colleagues and other interested parties what steps have been taken in relation to this subject. So we are almost at the end of my presentation, but before I go, I would like to summarise a couple of points I would like you to take away. Firstly, please understand that it is everybody's responsibility to ensure they have received the necessary competency training and are fully aware of the compliance requirements to ensure they can do the best possible job. Furthermore, it is also really important that we all work as a team to ensure compliance in this area. My overall aim is to ensure that the pipeline industry can be recognised as one of the leading contributors for effective and sustainable waste management. Finally, and the most important reason of all, is that there can be absolutely no room for cultural complacency. So this is the point where I leave you to ponder the information that I've just presented. However, if you do have any questions or would like any further clarification, please do not hesitate to contact me via one of the methods below. Thank you for your attention.